Welcome to part three of building super capitals. So by this point, you've likely moved all your minerals to your deep space building station and uh, you're ready to go. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Just before we do that, uh, let's just have again a quick recap of what we covered in the previous uh, videos, only because they are the foundations that allow you to get to this point. So what we have here, we remember we spoke about the Empire Corporation and what I've done here is just listed some of the, uh, the various things that you need to have. Uh, CEO character, freight group, gun builder corp, uh, group rather. So um, you can see how we've done that. Um, and again, refer to the previous video how that is set up. And we can see here for the builder corp, this is gonna be your deep space corporation. Now, to be honest, you can probably cross train much of these people. So don't worry too much about um, you know, the skill requirements there. So basically you can cross train a number of these people um, and a number of these are suggestions. So scouts and polls sitters are obviously um, just there for your own kind of personal use. Um, but I did talk about the jump freighter piece. I mean, I would stress that is a really good way to do it. It's a huge investment, but I really think it's, um, it, it means you can basically do logistics quite safely and, and think about it from a, large, a wider point of view. You could actually import tech two and, and see the market using your own characters there. So in terms of location, I'd recommend an NPC refinery system uh, only because they give you a more range of offices. Uh, if you have to use a Mimitar station, then so be it. Um, basically, you have to place all your BPOs and BPCs into generally a corp hangar if you're using multiple characters to build. And this is where I think maybe sometimes a separate corporation is not such a bad idea as well. Um, so you use the refinery for decompression and, um, and also the benefit that generally refiner NPC refineries have got a pretty crappy sex status means that you're not going to get too much traffic and miners and so on. Generally, you want to try and build somewhere quiet where there's not a lot of passing trade. Some alliances have refining tax on stations. If they do, talk to their leadership, charm and schmooze them as best you can because you need that really to be lifted for decompression. Otherwise, you're basically going to be adding 10% uh, to your prices. Uh, give them the, obviously, the state to them. It will be the benefit to them if you're building Titans and, and, uh, and super carriers. So frankly, if they put a 10% tax on it, then just put your prices up by 10%. But I think most alliances are not that stupid. They'll actually uh, acknowledge that that's a good thing to them. So in our diagram here, we've set up a Minmatar station, as you can see here. Uh, good joke, hey? Um, then what we do is we then set up our POS. Now, generally, you want to try and make the POS aligned to the undock of the station. So what I mean is, as you undock, the finger points towards the POS. This is generally so you can get an automatic, quickly, uh, quick undock. It's not a requirement as long as you're not kind of going to, you know, completely to the wrong side. Or the worst case is if you have to actually do maybe a 90 or a 180 degree turn. Uh, just try and avoid that. So once you've got this set up, you then are able to do almost an insta undock. And then what you want to do is set a bookmark for your freighters just beyond the POS tower so that at least you don't jostle for that. Then just do another one to turn around and dock. And then basically this is your process back and forward uh, to drop the minerals from the station to the POS. So basically use your capital ship assembly array to hold the minerals that you haul over to the POS. Now, you have to be able to trust your system here. If you think there's a chance you're gonna be sieged, frankly, you don't have the right location to build in. In the years I was building supers, I never got hit once or even close to being hit. So it's really just about pick your prime location, okay? So basically with a couple of freighters, you can do this with two or three really, uh, you can then start to move your minerals. Now, what happens if you can't build in a system where you decompress? Well, this is an example I used in Delve. I was able to decompress in Q-S um, or 5-6 rather. And really what we're able to do then is use bridge networks over to um, ZUTB. 7UTB rather, <laughs> it's been a while. And uh, this is where we then built the, um, the ship. So uh, again, it sounds a lot of work, but Ironically, it actually wasn't too bad. So by this point as well, if you've got Titan support with you, you can actually do uh, undocks to a Titan at a safe spot and then bridge back and forward as well, which is something we did as well. It sounds a lot of work, but it really isn't. And I think it's, um, it, it's, it's a great way to move stuff because it makes you feel really pro. So basically by this point, you now have all your minerals in the CSAA and you have your cap component arrays ready. And basically it just becomes a, a method of uh, drag drop and build from the station BPOs. And eventually you end up with a, hopefully a stack as you see here, ready to go. And then really at this point, you just click build. 
So the speed that you basically build at is dependent upon your blueprints, but after a time you'll start to accumulate more and then eventually you'll end up with your first Titan, which will then be followed by the second, as you can see by the amazing animation going on here. And then really you then start to, I think, widen your business because quite frankly, when you look at the build cost of a Titan, this is using G to price roughly um, from, I think, yesterday. You can see a building a Titan, you know, worst case is going to be about 68, uh, 68 million um, billion rather isk so when you're selling it then for 100 110 120 billion you're going to look at a significant return on your investment so with a bit of effort a few people some blueprints and really just a bit of time you can basically turn that into some very satisfied customers some really great super capital bills that you've done and of course you end up with a huge wallet balance which uh, i'm sure all of us would love so let's recap Number one, an Empire Corp compressing minerals into guns. This is where, again, remember, you need to have the ability in Empire to move a lot of minerals to a place where you can build and then lots of blueprints ready to build those minerals into guns that are nice and transportable. Then you need logistics. You build your logistics chain. This is something, again, I really would urge is probably the, the value add part of this entire process is if you can actually become self-sufficient in moving anything from Empire to deep space, you can earn a lot of risk from doing that. You also then need a deep space builder characters. Obviously that's part of your corporation. If you can do a separate corp, try and do that because that's a great way to do it. And of course they will need to be able to fly freighters within deep space as well. So what does this all add up to? Well, if in theory, if you can have a little bit of time, a little bit of risk and patience, and of course certainly the focus, you can end up with a passive income that basically will go on to earn you billions of risk and quite a bit of respect from your corp mates. So by this point, your Titan or Supercarrier is ready to be launched, and that is one hell of a day, I can tell you. Um, we'll look at that in the next video. Um, launching is something not to be taken lightly, as I find out, and you'll see in the next video. Um, but it's certainly something uh, that has got a great you know, sense of achievement to it, and uh, we'll look at that next time.